good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 terrible wrestling matches everybody loves sometimes the match is just so awful that you enjoy it like you just sit there and you just be like bro this is this is when you really think about it, this is bad but you know what i'm having a great time so screw it <laughs> i'm here it's like those bad movies that you know are awful but you're just watching it with your friends having a fantastic time and it becomes a cult classic because it's that bad this is those situations so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into it the clashes of the titans going on to become arguably one of the most iconic matchups in the history of the business two gimmicky grudge matches that were so horrendous you had no choice but to surrender to the madness these are those simply atrocious battles that somehow earned a soft spot in many a fan's hearts gareth here from what culture wrestling and here are 10 terrible wrestling matches everybody loves number 10 bret hart versus vince McMahon, WrestleMania 26. After the infamous uh, events of Montreal all those years ooh, ago, yeah, fans remember. simply wanted to take in the visual of a returning Bret the Hitman Hart getting some physical revenge on Vince McMahon after screwing him on his way out of WWE back in 1997. And though the actual content of said beatdown wasn't exactly inspired, no. with Mr. McMahon simply running around like a scared weasel before getting repeatedly knocked silly by the Hart family at ringside, and a weapon-wielding Hitman throughout the no-holds-barred fight, he did at least feel therapeutic. Therapeutic. Another WrestleMania classic to add to Brett's collection, this was not. It mm. never needed to be, though. Thanks largely to the fact Hart was forbidden from bumping on the back of his lawsuit with Lloyds of London, a match nobody genuinely thought would ever be brought into existence yeah. was always destined to turn into a plodding, drawn-out, one-sided ass-kicking. But you'd be lying if you said you didn't thoroughly enjoy the sight of good old Brett finally getting the visual last laugh over Vinnie Mac under the bright lights of his greatest creation. Mm -hmm. Number 9, John Cena vs. The Fiend, WrestleMania. WrestleMania 36. Credit to Bray Wyatt, John Cena, and WWE so for trying fun. to think <laughs> a little outside the box when it came to one of the marquee WrestleMania 36 showdowns unfortunately forced to go down inside of an empty performance center. That being said, the all-round insanity that can be found going down this during this Firefly so Funhouse yeah. slice of madness still brought with it a few guilty pleasure highlights along the way. From the face that runs the place going full muscle man, spouting out ruthless aggression in full 2002 mode, and donning an NW shirts for a too sweet what if beat to Wyatt's doing his best Eric Bischoff. A physical battle for the ages was nowhere to be seen, yet if you were looking for a few cheap pops in the thick of a terrifying global pandemic, then Wyatt and Cena had you this covered. Number eight, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, WrestleMania 20. This was just bizarre, wasn't it? And mm. it's still hilariously odd to behold nearly two decades later. With both Brock Lesnar and Bill Goldberg's exits from WWE being made known in the lead up to this once highly mm -hmm. anticipated battle of the monsters, it became clear about 20 seconds into their WrestleMania 20 battle that it was going to be a long final night at the office for the pair. Special guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin could do nothing but sit back and watch the car crash unfold yep. as waves of goodbye and you sold out chance rained down on the departing rivals. And it was the priceless hijacking of this never-ending spell of posturing that made this one of the most enjoyable disasters ever to grace the <laughs> grandest stage. The actual content of the match was about as forgettable as it comes, yeah. but Austin's stunning of both of the soon-to-be former WWE stars on their way out the Which door great. bookended one of the balmiest and unintentionally funniest blockbuster collisions you're ever likely to witness. Number 7, Rey Mysterio vs Seth Rollins, The Horror Show at Extreme Rules 2020. With Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins gripped in a blood feud <laughs> heading into the July 2020 PLE, a ton of eye shenanigans. I'm still trying to figure out who loved these matches, bro. <laughs> you had me at a couple of the first few, but I don't know about these last two. No, I don't think anybody liked these matches. Not even just, not even just ironically, like, oh, this is funny. No. Anigans had ultimately set the stage for the pair to settle the score in none other than an eye for an eye match. Unsurprisingly, what with the rivals being two of the finest performers on the roster, the match itself was a ton of ludicrous eye-targeting fun. Mysterio yeah. once again proved he simply hasn't aged a day in the last 20 years, and a heelish Rollins was at his innovative best throughout. The glorious yeah. chemistry shared between the two in this daft contest, however, is understandably overshadowed by a farcical conclusion <laughs> consisting of Ray Ray having his rubber eye popped out of his skull, and the visionary seemingly chucking up at the sight of the comical over-the-top finish. But even that 
undoubtedly silly closing match stretch was, was the best was kind of good. dumb. With the throwaway line of his eye is sticking out of his head, perfectly summing up why many would quite happily sit through this chaos time and time again. Number six, The <laughs> Giants versus Hulk Hogan, Halloween Havoc 1995. After surviving falling off the top of the arena, Paul White would dramatically re-emerge to take on the Hulkster in the main event of Halloween Havoc 1995. And your typical Hogan title defense would ensue as the pair staggered around the ring for 10 minutes or so. This all then led to the sort of overbooked finish WCW ultimately became synonymous with, as Jimmy Hart knocked down the ref, forcing a DQ victory for the Giant, and eventually turned on Hogan before joining the Dungeon of Doom. But wait, there was more. Paying off the reveal of a frozen block of ice supposedly holding an insurance policy for the group by the name of the Yeti on a prior edition of Nitro, and the campiest of all debuts soon became a magnificent reality. Honestly, the visual of Ron Reese wrapped in bandages helping the Giants give a helpless Hogan and Randy Savage some relentless cuddles is enough to force even the coldest of souls to crack a smile. What it's unequivocally excruciating, hell? but you simply cannot take your eyes away from this legendary car crash. Number 5, what the Intercontinental the Championship <laughs> Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber 2015. The Elimination Chamber has played host to some hugely memorable bouts of multi-person madness over the years, and 2015's Intercontinental Championship Edition was no different. But instead of being fondly remembered for dominant performances or jaw-dropping spots, this battle to crown a new mid-card title holder is often cited as the biggest disaster the hellacious structure has ever unleashed. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what makes it such a wonderful chunk of unforgettable mayhem to revisit. Things quickly began to unravel in the wake of Mark Henry's pod accidentally being broken by Wade Barrett, with this unexpected introduction quickly forcing <laughs> a change of plan. This then resulted in the majority of the field sporting entirely confused expressions on their faces for the remainder of the contest, yep. and likely influenced the many baffling subsequent developments, such as Henry oddly breaking up Barrett's attempts to put away Dolph Ziggler with a wasteland. What were you doing, Mark? Ziggler's <laughs> attempting to steady the sinking ship with audible spot calling, and even more confusion surrounding Seamus's seemingly malfunctioning pod all helped cement this particular chamber outing oh, as the calamitous gift that awful. just kept on giving. <laughs> Number four, Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan, SummerSlam 2005. When the Sean original plan for this icon was overselling just because <laughs> Shawn was didn't care. Versus Legend program reportedly would have seen Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan take part in a best of three series. But Hogan ultimately wanted nothing to do with any of that, and it was his backing out of the subsequent matches that paved the way for HBK mm -hmm. going into brassed off selling Overdrive in their <laughs> one and only single showdown. Yet far from rejecting the sight of Michaels making a fool out of the supposed babyface on the night, those in attendance and watching around the world absolutely lapped up the veteran's excessive bump. I ain't gonna lie to you. Dude, this shit was this was actually fun. I could go back and watch this match and die because Sean just he 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 could have cared less. He was over he was killing the match on purpose, but that shit was hilarious. Thing and slapstick selling. Sure, it may have transformed what could have been one of the biggest matches of the 2000s into little more than a 20-minute joke, but Michael's admittedly unprofessional call to be a pain in the butt, as he put it, for his iconic adversary still sits as one of the most entertaining outings ever to flip onto the SummerSlam stage. That Number shit three, was funny. Big Show versus Akibono, WrestleMania 21. Big Show's quest to best the mighty real-life sumo <sighs> wrestling star Akibono at his own game is up there with the most surreal visuals the land of sports entertainment has ever produced and no. that is saying something over in around a minute the brief clash of the giants in a sumo bout isn't exactly going to change your life but witnessing two 500 pound humans colliding with one another in mawashis definitely boasted the odd big lad highlight including akibono suddenly being hoisted up by show before the latter is swiftly dumped off the canvas like the biggest sack of spuds you've ever laid your eyes on admittedly it's little more than two larger-than-life humans slapping and hugging each other for 60 seconds in their oversized underwear. Yet there's still a surprising amount of joy to be found in this bizarre throwaway mania special attraction. Not Number two, me. Kenny Omega versus John Moxley, AEW Revolution 2021. Fully embracing the exploding barbed wire deathmatch surroundings they found themselves in, the violent oh pair boy. took great pleasure in launching one another into various barbed wire weapons and ropes. With both world-class individuals gushing blood in their efforts to walk out of Daly's place as the AEW World champion. As savage as it was routinely innovative throughout, the bout was building towards what seemed like the perfect crescendo. 
After a second one-winged angel attempt through a chair thanks to some good brother assistance, Mox was defeated. But the night didn't end there. With Mox being left for dead in the middle of the ring as the countdown clock signaled an incoming catastrophic explosion. Only for the end product to consist of the rather oh embarrassing God. visual of Eddie Kingston risking his life to save his pal from those deadliest of sparklets. <laughs> There's no getting around the fact that said underwhelming closing stretch was about as terrible a pay-per-view conclusion as AEW oh are ever likely to experience. God, but never awful. forget that the gruesome, gripping action up to that point is still worthy of admiration. Number 1. Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant, WrestleMania 3 There's a solid chance you will not be able to find a single person walking this planet today who has not witnessed Hulk Hogan's remarkable feat of strength at WrestleMania 3. But away from the power slam heard around the world in the Hulkster's main event battle with Andre the Giant, there wasn't actually an awful lot more to write home about, was there? With Andre not moving all too well due to the sheer stress of his 520 pound weight on his bones and joints, much of the match just consisted of the champ being tossed around like a cruiserweight and squeezed into submission by the giant challenger. Hell, Dave Meltzer even went as far as to give the contest a pitiful minus four star rating when all was said and done. Damn. Yet while the action itself was about as disappointing as it gets, none of that really mattered, did it? All those packed into the Pontiac Silverdome cared about was seeing the Hulkster slam his titanic rival and drop the yep. title defending leg. And when that finally happens, both an instantly iconic wrestling moment and many a new wrestling fan was born. And that's our list. No many yeah, other terrible wrestling it. matches everybody loves. Let us know all about them. That's that's literally what was it. They, people were just there to see that iconic moment and, and that was it and go home. <laughs> I don't know if I would agree with all these uh, matches on here as being something that I would like go back and watch and like, oh, I enjoy this even though it's not that good. Some of them, yes. Not all of them, though. So comment down below. Let me know what are some of the matches that uh, you find as a guilty pleasure. You know it's not a good match, but you still watch it. You go back and watch it from time to time because you just had so much fun with it. Let me know down below if it wasn't on this list already. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K, and I am still your undisputed YouTube person champion of the world and your Intercluster World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.